Okay, hello and welcome back to Sonic TV. I'm Andrew Weir, and today I want to look at bump maps on Blender 2.64. And I want to do this really quickly, just get a quick tutorial out there, and then I'm going to explain a few things at the end. So, um, it's really important and it's a good technique. So, what you're going to need is a brick texture or a cobbled street or something like that, uh, which is most recommended just to follow this tutorial. But um, after this tutorial, you might be able to use it later for for more specific results and uh, one, it's a really easy technique there's only like one setting that needs changing but first we're going to need to know that a bump map is black and white and highly contrasted version of the original so um, you don't need to do this in Photoshop or GIMP or anything like that you can do it straight in your uh, image editing software that will already be downloaded if you have Windows just click maybe it'll be under edit and adjustments or something like that and then go to the adjustments and you will find something like this so just the contrast exposure and saturation and what I did is bring the saturation down to black and white which made it black and white and then I brung the contrast up a little bit which of course I've already done so you want it to give a similar result to uh, how it is now and when you do this, if I bring the contrast all the way up, we would get rid of all the information there. And that's not what we want. We want to still see that it is the brick texture, and we want to get this like uh, variation between the white and the black without wiping out entire areas. Uh, we can then change the exposure a little bit. I bring mine up um, to make it a little bit more bright, but that's not that important. And that is basically all you need. So I'm going to reset them to normal. And I've got my texture here. Next, we can go to Blender. And we can get rid of this default cube. And I'm going to press Shift S and snap that cursor back to the center because it was a little bit off. Then add a, a plane. I'm going to scale this up and scale it on the Y axis. Then next, I'm just going to put a really strong light, uh, and when I say strong, I'm just moving the light right next to my texture. When we render this, we can see the light is really strong here, and then obviously it's uh, fairly dark over there just because of the size of the texture, and so on. So that's just going to give us a variation and show that how the bump map actually works. Uh, and next, we're going to need to unwrap this, and this, the only reason I'm unwrapping this really basic shape is there's one other thing that I want to show you, uh, which is good with, when you're unwrapping. But if it isn't a, a plane, which it most likely isn't going to be, then you're going to need to have it unwrapped anyway, so it's good practice. And what we're going to do is go into edit mode, and because it is just a plane, we don't need to add any seams. Press U and unwrap. And then we get this little warning up here, which means object scale is 1.0, and uh, you know it's not going to be the right scale unless you apply it. But most people don't know what that is, and I'll, I didn't know what that was until I came across a random tutorial that told me um, when you do this, it, if you haven't applied the scale, it doesn't turn out too well. So, uh, close this, and we can see what it's done. Remember, I stretched this into a more of a rectangle shape. If we look at this texture, we can see that it's actually just a square. So, uh, obviously, it's not the same size and shape that we wanted. And that's what that warning is all about. So let's press, I think it's Control A. Yep, press Control A and apply the scale. Uh, and that will all be default, just apply the scale. Well, obviously, once you've modeled the shape, if you now go on to model it, you'll have to apply the scale again. And then go back into edit mode. See this box here, how it is unwrapped at the moment. Unwrap it again, and we can see that we've got our rectangle shape back. I actually want my UV to be rotated at 90 degrees just because that's the shape that I want it going down the rectangle rather than uh, across. And so from here, we've got this new shape and it hasn't got a material. Apply that. You can change it to look a little bit more like a brick texture because it's not going to be that shiny or reflective. So uh, I think the default's going to be okay, so keep it like that for me. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to press new. And 
you should be fairly familiar with this. Go to new uh, image or movie, open, find your image, mine's on my desktop. So let's go for uh, that one. Yep, that's the one I want. And let's go to UV mapping. So gen mapping, go to coordinates UV and select your UV map. Which again, for this plane, is completely pointless. And if you had it on generated, it would work perfect. But uh, it's good practice, so continue to do that. And then what we're going to do is click on this lower texture down here, put a new one in. Image or movie again. Open. Uh, desktop. And select our black and white image. And there it is. And here we want it to be on the UV map again, just so it's the same as the other one. Uh, close all these and then we can just see this one in influence and what we do is get rid of color and put in normal so see this one here it says normal check that one and you'll see the result that we get uh, just I'll um, I'll disable that for a second and I'll take it to slot 2 and I'll render one more time and we can see that's how it is without the bump map. So looking at this shape, if I just pull that out here, that's got no bump map applied at all. And we can see that it's, it, it doesn't look horrific. Uh, I mean, if you had it there on a wall and you had loads of objects about and things, it wouldn't look bad. But putting a bump map in, as you can see, makes it look a lot better. Although, uh, at the moment, the bump map being set to normal at the, uh, at the default, it has made it too strong and it also has made, rather than the bricks coming out of the wall, it's actually made this white area here come out of the wall. And that's not exactly what we want. So let's go to minus one. And I'll go on a new slot just to show you what it looks like, the difference render image and we can see that that's the, the new one uh, again it's way too strong so uh, but still that's the new one and we can see that that area is inwards and the bricks are actually outwards which is what we want so let's go to one and we can see that they are opposites uh, concerning on what's actually coming off the wall and we can see that the light look, makes it look a lot better so let's take it back to slot two which is the, without the bump map and we can see that it really, really makes it a lot higher and good of a texture. Uh, but it's way too strong, so let's go to minus 0 0.5. New slot. Uh, you don't have to make new slots, I'm just doing that so I can show you the difference. Render. And we can see that that's looking pretty okay. Uh, you could take it down even more if you wanted, maybe. The suggested one was minus 0 0.15. Let's see what that looks like. Um, but it doesn't matter too much. I quite like it fairly high just because you can really notice that it is actually looking quite 3D. So I'm going to go for minus 0 0.3. You know, just to make it, you want it to be noticeably good uh, if you're going to have it in your scene. Uh, but you don't want it to be too uh, black in your, some areas. So uh, that is basically bump maps. Which setting you want on there is basically the only thing that you need to change. And it's really simple. So it's worth knowing and it gives her an amazing effect. Um, so uh, as I said that I want to mention one quick thing at the end of this tutorial as well. Uh, so stick around if you want to, but it's just going to be mostly about subscribers, which I'm going to thank 200 subscribers at this point. If you have any tutorial suggestions, I've finished all the tutorials that I wanted to do when I made the channel. So it's a perfect time at the point of submission of this video to just put a comment down there on what you would like help with, uh, as long as it can be made in tutorial form. I'll make a tutorial on it, and as long as it's a popular problem, then I will mention how to solve it. Uh, just try to help everyone out. And so, I'll see you in the next video. Uh, bye for now.